Hello and welcome to Infoscope. I'm your host, Hannah Kim. It's once again time for the latest from the IT and science world. Let's start by taking a look at some of today's headlines. Korea has been working towards space exploration, but some have voiced concern that the mission could become a one-time project with short-term results. In fact, the Korea Institute of Science and Technology Evaluation and Planning emphasized the need for a clear objective in order to ensure the program is a success. We'll have more on this in just a moment. And turning our attention to new research facilities, the Institute for Basic Science added two new research centers at the beginning of the year. The Center for Climate Physics and the Center for Quantum Nanoscience, both of which will be headed by foreign directors. This latest addition brings the total number of research centers under IBS to 28. Let's take a closer look at these stories in our first segment, Briefing Scope. The Institute for Basic Science launched two new research centers, the Center for Climate Physics and the Center for Quantum Nanoscience. The Center for Climate Physics will harness supercomputers to create climate models which will be used to research climate change and phenomena such as El Niño. The Center for Quantum Nanoscience will focus on the long-term goal of realizing quantum computing. The Korea Institute of Science and Technology Evaluation and Planning published a report on R&D policies for sustainable space missions and pointed out that Korea's space program is geared toward national pride or short-term results. The report further stated that while there's a plan for space exploration until 2040, it's not backed up by sufficient scientific goals. Starting this year, the Ministry of Science, ICT and Future Planning's first research initiative will go into effect. This initiative provides roughly $26,000 per year to scientists under the age of 39 who haven't received any research grants from the government before. They must also be a full-time lecturer at a four-year university's science or engineering department. The ministry will receive applications till March and provide funds to 1,000 scientists. It's great to hear about a support system for scientists which in the long run will benefit the country. Now besides this initiative, the Ministry of Science, ICT and Future Studies has released additional plans and goals for 2017. They include boosting AI technology that improves our everyday lives. We'll have more details on this in just a bit. But first, let's talk about animals, more specifically sharks. A ghost shark was captured on camera in extremely deep waters, waters so deep that there is no light. What's more interesting is that the ghost shark was discovered in the northern hemisphere for the first time, as this species is usually found near Australia and New Zealand. While the footage was captured a few years ago, researchers were able to learn more about this curious looking species. Take a look at the clip of this ghost shark right now on Industry Inside. Pale blue skin, patched body, and empty looking eyes. This ghost shark was spotted in 2009 in waters off California and Hawaii. Initially, researchers could not determine what species it was, but eventually concluded that it was a pointy-nosed blue chimera. Last observed near New Caledonia in 2002, this species was seen for the first time in the Northern Hemisphere. It was captured on camera by chance by a remotely operated vehicle, which was exploring ocean floors. These video observations show individuals occurring over rocky seafloor. This was unexpected because ghost sharks are usually found over sedimented seafloor. Ghost sharks split off from the groups of sharks and rays about 300 million years ago and took on the current appearance, but there is very little known about these rarely seen fish. Furthermore, out of the 38 known species of ghost sharks, only two have been observed in the northern hemisphere. In order to confirm the identity of this animal, we need to collect specimens, analyze its physical characteristics, and conduct DNA analyses so we can compare it with other known species. It's the first time that such clear footage of a ghost shark has been captured, giving momentum to additional research on this mysterious species.
The Ministry of Science, ICT, and Future Planning has pinned researchers as the driving force behind the advancement of science and technology. Subsequently, the ministry will significantly expand its funding for projects that are arranged by researchers instead of the government. The government will increase its support for individual research projects by $87 million. It will also eliminate its evaluation criteria that focus on the number of papers published. 연구자 주도의 상향식 과제 비중 확대, 평가 전문성 강화 및 간소화, 연구자 권리 구제를 위한 제재 심의 위원회 설치 등 연구자 중심의 R&D 혁신을 추진하겠습니다. The government will also implement a variety of public services that uses artificial intelligence, focusing primarily on healthcare and public safety. Artificial intelligence will analyze footage gathered by surveillance cameras to prevent crimes, and robots will look after the emotional well-being of the elderly. 국방, 사회 안전, 교육 등의 기본적인 국가 서비스의 지능 정보 기술을 접목하고 제조업, 헬스케어, 교통, 스마트홈 등 산업 영역별 지능형 융합 서비스를 발굴 확산하겠습니다. Another primary task for the ministry is coming up with a strategy for ushering in the AI and information society. The ministry has launched the Strategic Committee for the Artificial Intelligence and Information Society, which brings together the private and public sectors, and different branches of the government will follow suit by creating forums. While Korea faces a low economic growth rate of around 2 percent, many people are hoping that science and technology will help restore Korea's growth engine. Let's see what outcomes the ministry's key projects will bring this year. Ginger is known for its sharp scent and taste. Many consume it for its health properties, which include boosting the immune system and alleviating inflammation. The substances that give ginger its spicy taste warm the body and are beneficial for the respiratory system, making them effective against colds or asthma. Now, new research shows that fermented ginger can help boost a person's memory. Ginger contains a minute amount of peridol, which is known to boost cognitive functions. The researchers created a significant amount of this substance by heating ginger oil, which gives ginger its spicy taste and using specific microorganisms to ferment it. Feeding fermented ginger to mice with memory retention problems resulted in the mice regaining full learning and memory capabilities. It was found to be 20% more effective than the health supplements on the market. 네, 아미로이드 베타가 이제 치매의 원인 물질 중 하나라고 알려져 있는데 시냅스 손상을 억제하였고 또 아미로이드 베타에서 유도된 그 뇌신경 세포 사멸을 이제 발효 생강이 억제를 하였습니다. The researcher stated that ginger fermented with edible microorganisms is an effective natural product for boosting cognitive capabilities. It holds potential to not only restore memory capacity, but also suppress brain disorders, such as dementia. You always hear that ginger is good for fighting colds, but I never knew it could also boost a person's memory. In that case, I should definitely eat more ginger with my food. Now moving on, if you ever met a patient with gout, you know that it causes horrible chronic pain. And as of now, there is no available drug to cure gout, rather only to provide temporary relief from pain. With that said, recently Korean researchers have found that propolis extracted from beeswax can make for a potentially effective treatment. We'll have more on this shortly. But before that story, we have updates about light therapy. A team of U.S.-based researchers implanted an LED that emits different shades of light to trigger different emotions in a brain. The research is currently in the animal testing stage, but it has the potential to also treat human brain disorders like depression. Here are some more details on this in our next segment, Tech a Peek. This lab mouse has an LED implanted in its head. When the LED is blue, the mouse is in a relaxed state. As the LED changes to green, the mouse exhibits discomfort and attempts to escape from its enclosure. This is an application of optogenetics, a biological technique which involves the use of light to control living cells. The mouse was genetically engineered to react to blue light and green light that are connected to positive and negative emotions, respectively. The researchers implanted the LED and controlled it wirelessly. 우선 
특정 비체 파장대에 반응하는 단백질을 해당 신경세포의 주사를 통해 주입한 뒤 해당되는 신경세포의 빛을 조여주면 그 신경세포를 활성화 또는 비활성화 시킬 수 있습니다. The researchers can use this technique to control specific neurons and conduct extensive brain research. They aim to eventually apply this technique to humans and use it to treat disorders like depression. 우리가 감정을 조절하는 기능을 담당하는 뇌의 영역인 편도체를 자극하여서 지나친 감정을 비활성화를 통해 조절할 수 있고 반대로 우울증 증세가 나타나게 된다면 다시 활성화를 통해 뇌 영역을 자극하여 감정을 극대화할 수 있습니다. The research and its results were published in the academic journal Proceedings of the National Academy of Science. This patient has been suffering from gout for the past 20 years. The pain subsides and flares up again. 칼을 살로 베는 것처럼 보다 더 아픈 그런 통증이 와요. Gout is a form of inflammatory arthritis caused by high levels of uric acid in the blood. The acid crystallizes and attaches itself to joints, causing severe pain. Anti-inflammation medication or medicine for breaking down uric acid can only provide temporary pain relief. Currently, there is no known cure. Now a team of Korean researchers has found that a substance in propolis, also known as bee glue, holds potential as a treatment for gout. The substance is called caffeic acid phenethyl ester, or CAPE, and researchers found that it recognizes uric acid in the body and suppresses the formation of a complex that plays a key role in inflammation. This was confirmed in testing with lab mice. 유산으로 유도된 급성 통풍 모델에서 벌집에서 추출된 케이프를 투여한 결과 어, 만 하루 만에 통풍의 병증이 개선된 것을 확인할 수 있었습니다. This treatment was found to be more effective than general anti-inflammatory medications and have lesser side effects. 케이프라고 하는 것이 통풍 개선에 저희가 봤을 때 탁월한 효능이 있었기 때문에 아마 프로폴리스를 좀 꾸준히 많이 드시는 경우에 어, 통풍 뭐 예방이라든지 개선에 도움이 될 것으로 생각을 합니다. Researchers hope that their finds can help reduce the pain felt by some 300,000 gout patients in Korea. Current anti-cancer treatments involve directly attacking cancer cells. In some cases, the treatment also involves suppressing the formation of cancerous blood vessels, thereby cutting off oxygen and nutrient flow. However, this method has not produced significant results. Cancerous tissues form abnormal blood vessels, which are unable to perform properly or deliver sufficient oxygen. Trying to suppress the formation of new vessels only reduces oxygen levels in the tumor, which actually promotes metastasis. 이제 원래 저산소증에는 정상 세포는 살 수가 없는데 산소가 부족해도 살수 있는 방식으로 적응을 해요. 다른 장기로 전이하기 쉬운 이제 형태로 바뀌기도 하고. 주변에 있는 면역 세포들의 기능도 약화시키고 그래서 암을 둘러싸간 환경 전체가 치료하기 어렵게 점점 악화되는 과정으로 Suppressing new blood vessels and tumors will not affect cancer cells that have already spread, but only deteriorate the situation. Now Korean researchers have developed a way to normalize the blood vessels and tumors by inserting a substance. In laboratory experiments, the researchers found that the oxygen supply increased and the progression of cancers slowed. Furthermore, medications became more effective and tumor sizes in lab mice shrank by 40%, while the mice were able to live 42% longer. 기존의 항암제가 더잘 전달될 수 있고 항암제 효과도 높아지기 때문에 적은 양의 항암제로도 이제 충분한 치료 효과를 얻을 수 있을 것이고 그리고 면역 세포도 재기능을 할 수가 있어서 the researchers hope that alternating this technique with conventional methods can significantly increase the effectiveness of cancer treatment. We had another fun and exciting episode today. I personally remember the fermented ginger and the ghost shark stories. We also had news about breakthroughs in the medical field like the possible treatment for gout and how LED light can be used to control our emotions. All very, very cool. But that last segment wraps up today's episode of Infoscope. We will be sure to be back with more interesting and informative news next time. Have a wonderful day and goodbye.